Welcome back to The Next Generation Critic, where each episode is graded like a school project, starting with 100 points and one point taken away for each error, and we'll see what's left. Today's episode is The Last Outpost. The crew is stopped at an abandoned listening post of a lost civilization and meet their new enemies, the Ferengi. Yes! The first point is lost for Starfleet even leaving such an important piece of equipment on an unmanned post. Of course it's gonna get stolen. At least the scanners saw it, like when your camera sees somebody stealing your Amazon package. The next point is lost for two ships chasing each other at warp speeds. At hundreds of times the speed of light, even the tiniest fraction of a degree of difference in direction will send them hundreds of light years away in seconds. Look closely, rockers show support to Worf, one of those little things you don't see unless you watch a show over and over again. And check this out, Commander Riker keeps the exact same expression on his face while he's walking down the ramp. Riker calls the ship a she, while Picard calls it a they. Oh no, here we go again with the preferred pronouns of a spaceship. Riker's like, alright, it's a they. Jordy says the first I. Minus one point, there's no way that listening post will be able to stop a ship traveling at warp speed. Captain Picard and Data mansplain to each other. They are firing on us. This beautiful view of the Ferengi Marauder is almost as scary as the people inside. Riker asks, do we return their fire, sir? And Picard says, I'm not, sir. That's because this was before Patrick Stewart was knighted. Tasha decides to talk about her last date. Did you notice in the first season, Captain Picard says, what the hell, more than Riker? Now, all their power systems are out and they haven't even started the show yet. Worf curses those capitalist trolls. Picard can't get engineering to answer. Didn't anyone tell him that during the first season they didn't have an engineer? Then he tells Jordy to go to engineering and Jordy's like, Sir, I'm not the engineer until next year. You're getting ahead of yourself. Ironically, Deanna senses nothing from them either. And this is before it's established that she can't read Ferengi's thoughts. She read next year's script too. In the first season, there tend to be a lot more shadows on the bridge. Data compares the Ferengi as the worst form of capitalist. No! Picard, of course, likes the term Yankee traders because it reminds him of his childhood. Oh, didn't anybody here build ships in bottles when they were boys? Riker's thinking of that one time he built a ship. Data loses a point for comparing sea merchants to the flag and Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. Exactly, Worf. The whole purpose of that was a plot device to let everyone know Tasha thinks white is a primary color. Did she forget the whole crew wears bright primary colors? Minus one point for Picard's rant about flags since the Federation and the other Empire still fly flags to compete with each other. Obviously, he didn't see this show. And welcome to the first on-location episode of Dr. Sheldon Cooper and Dr. Amy Farrah Fowler present Dr. Dr. Sheldon, Sheldon Cooper's Fun with flags. flags. This is to give Picard a chance to talk about how great France is and for Data to piss off Picard. That's two episodes in a row that he's done it now. Picard keeps calling for engineering, but LaForge is thinking, I'm still not answering it until next year when it's my official job. For now, I'll just let him think communications is out. Riker says I number two and his shadow follows him. Data keeps on rambling and Picard is thinking, are you just going to state the obvious for the next seven years? One thing about the next generation, the opening credits just continue on forever. Riker and LaForge are both thinking, this must be a government ship built by the lowest bidder since our control panel was stolen from Starfleet headquarters and it's 75 years old. Minus one point for no one in engineering talking to the bridge officers who came down for more information. Minus one point for LaForge saying 0.372 milliseconds. That would mean three tenths of one millisecond now, wouldn't it? Minus one point for LaForge and Riker getting way too excited right here. It sounds too corny. Yeah, come back, fight. Woo-wee! What this baby can do, sir. Give me everything you got, LaForge. Aye, aye, sir. And minus one point for LaForge telling everyone in engineering what to do because technically he is not the chief engineer. Jordy says eyes number three and four. One eye is sufficient acknowledgement. Is this the only time Picard says, uh, look quick, they did restore communication to engineering, although nobody's there to answer, and then they try to communicate with the Ferengi, and then Riker quotes Sun Tzu. Spoiler alert, they're being monitored by the portal right now. Picard and Deanna both adjust before they go to warp. Is this the only time they count to three before going to warp nine? And there they go. Okay, it didn't quite work the way they wanted. Picard says, Jordy, what happened to that woo-wee you promised us all? Card says a French word for fecal material. 
It got through the sensors. Whoever's going through their records wants to know, why are all the graphics green like they were in the 1980s? And it's Troy who figures out what's going on. Yes! Tasha Yar and Lieutenant Worf want to kill, kill, kill. Tasha's thinking, they shot first so we can take them out. Then Deanna gets all goody goody and says, well, we were chasing them and all they've been doing is searching their computers to find out who we are. What a buzzkill. And she's the one who suggests they surrender, but she's also the one who sensed something was coming from the surface instead. So minus one point for horrible advice. And Picard's already thinking about blowing up the ship. They didn't think the series would last very long either, did they? Minus one point for Picard surrendering before even getting the results from the planet. He gives up way too quick. Of course, Riker's thinking, this will get him fired and I'll be in charge instead. So go ahead, Captain, surrender for no reason. I dare you. According to the Captain's log, Picard Picard surrendered in less than one hour, and minus one point for the captain's log talking down to the audience, we did not forget what happened before the commercials. This is an unusual comment to make, and I don't think we see the Marauder open like that anymore in the series. Tasha says strike first. Deanna says, let's fight to the end. Oh, Damon Tarzan, it turns out their ship is also losing power. Wait, didn't Picard take Deanna's advice to surrender before even trying diplomacy first? No wonder they never listened to her for the rest of the series. After this, whenever Deanna tries to counsel someone, they tell her to mind her own business, then go talk to Guinan instead. Now they launch a probe. That should have been the first thing they did, so minus one point. Now you can finally see the most terrifying species in the galaxy, the Ferengi. Minus one point for Data mumbling to George about this, he would have never done that. That's totally inappropriate. Minus one point for kids being in the conference room. They shouldn't be able to get up here. And you know why they're showing those ships on the wall. Merchandise. And look quick, this kid playing is a Vulcan. Look close, does this abstract art piece look like a horse to you? The car's really worn out. He just called Riker a lieutenant. Jordy says, I number five, and you know what that means. <laughs> Now Riker swears. It is currently laced with, shall I say, more colorful metaphors. Wait, is Data storing drugs in the conference room? And now he was caught. They say this is a class M planet. This is one thing you don't see in the later shows is the holographic emitter on the conference table. They went back to just using a screen on the wall the old school way. Does everybody know why? It's because that table was destroyed in Star Trek VI. Why does Riker laugh when you say the word outpost? They actually have quite a bit of information on this empire that's been gone for 600,000 years. So I did find this scene amusing. However, Data should know how to get out of this, so minus one point. Minus one point here because the yellow makeup rubs off of Data's fingertips. The probe transmission report, it's the planet that has a hold over the ship. And in seconds, rumors spread all over the Enterprise about how Picard surrendered to the Ferengi capitalists in less than one hour because he didn't do his homework. Picard also doesn't seem to know too much about science, does he? Data says their star went supernova, and Picard asks, do you think this planet escaped that? It's still here, so that might be the answer. Data's just being polite here so he doesn't piss off Picard anymore today. Let's invite the Ferengi to go down to the surface with us. Damon Tarr is shocked by the alien images. Of course, Picard is posing like Peter Pan. Minus one more point for Data and Jordy muttering while Picard is trying to negotiate. That's something Wesley would do. Now Picard's gotta clean up that mess. Damon Tarr only seeks what is equitable. That doesn't sound like a capitalist at all. And I'm gonna skip this long, boring banter between Tar and Picard because it's long and boring. This episode also establishes the Ferengis calling them humans all the time. Data states the obvious again, and Troy says she senses Tar is up to something, but that could just be her experience speaking, so I can't take a point for her mind reading somebody she can't read the mind of. Aww. Picard tells Riker to be careful, and Riker says, don't worry, Captain, I always take protection. Minus one point for a single set of doors on the fake turbo lift. That's what it makes it look fake. Minus one point for the entire senior bridge crew leaving the bridge. Minus one point for not bringing a security or research team with them. A ship with a crew of a thousand would always have a scheduled team that goes to the surface. And minus one point for not wearing protective gear. Seriously, the last time we saw that was in the cage. This is definitely not a Class M planet, so minus one point. Minus one point for Riker not even trying to use his communicator to find out where everybody went to. Riker finds Data who says, Commander Riker, this is incredible. I didn't know magic rocks could grow this big. 
Data then wants to know if they're alone so he can secretly tell Riker what he did with Tasha Yar. Data tells Commander Riker that these crystalline structures are mostly inert. However, some are hurt. Data practices annoying small talk. Jordy talks back to a senior officer. Data uses a contraction, minus one point. Then Data says, Jordy, are those the whip warriors from Captain EO? <laughs> The Ferengi Whip Warriors take out Jordy, Riker, and Data. But look at where they land before we go to the next scene. Six hours have passed and the Enterprise has nearly lost all power, including life support. So, minus one point for the door still working, minus one point for artificial gravity still working, minus one point for none of them wearing jackets. Minus one point for being too close to the windows, the center of the ship would be much warmer. And minus one point for no visible exhaled breath. Riker moved while he was unconscious to use Jordi as a pillow, so minus one point. The Ferengi just don't come off as terrifying, do they? Riker is crouched in two different positions depending on the camera angle, so minus one point. Now for the Star Trek mandated good old fashioned fist fight. Yes! However, unlike a Kurt fight, this one's more like watching Larry, Curly, and Moe fight. Larry, Curly, and Moe. How did Worf get away with saying this on national TV? Tasha comes to rescue the boys. Yes! But it turns out she doesn't need a phaser. Just to see them working with a clothed female is too disgusting for the Ferengi to handle. Back on the Enterprise, one point is lost since Wesley is not in the show. Dr. Crusher wants to give him a sedative. They really give up quick on this show, don't they? Picard says Wesley should face death a week. Crusher makes a sexist remark and Picard says, that's rubbish, no wonder you got fired. Rubbish. Tasha wants the Ferengis to stop running around like they had six espressos, but now the phasers aren't working. Who wants to tell Jordy that Patterns of Force was an original series episode, not one of theirs? Portal 63, possibly asleep for 600,000 years, makes his grand appearance. I am Mars, the great and powerful. Of course, Riker thinks he's the first baseman. While Portal is asking why they came there, Data is thinking, I can ask him to be human. Jordy is thinking, I can ask for sight. And Worf is thinking, I just want to shoot the Ferengi. Tasha is thinking, of course, the Ferengi are the flying monkeys. And for a limited TV budget, this is actually a pretty good special effect. Portal says his pronouns are we whim. It turns out Portal has been asleep since even before the fall of the Takan Empire. The Ferengi decide to do some ass kissing, but they probably don't realize Portal knows they stole the transmitter. Now they accuse the humans of being communists. Riker calls them demented. Now they're really going to get themselves an ass whooping, aren't they? Wait, Portal wants to work for her now. Riker confesses the sins of humanity. What a wuss. The card stood up to Q over the same subject just a few weeks ago. And now Data rats them all out. So minus one point for season one's regular 20th century Earth bashing. Minus one point for this outpost waiting for them to go to the surface instead of contacting them in space. Riker is being tested. He knows my name! He knows my name! Portal is thinking, I've been waiting to do this trick for 600,000 years. Riker passes the test and everyone is happy. Except for the Ferengi, of course. Minus one point here, the ship lost power and heat, not oxygen, so why do they all pass out? The Ferengi try to be little ass kissers one last time. Portal and Riker get into some boring philosophical rants. Now Riker compares the Ferengi to 20th century humans. And what is the identity of Portal? Is he a life form or a computer generated security program? We never really find out, do we? Picard gives a shout out to Lieutenant Yar and War for their hard work. Data found something to write home about. And the first time Picard says, make it so, is to beam over Chinese finger puzzles to the Ferengi ship. And the last point is lost since Jordy and the rest of the crew would never have their fingers stuck in one of these things while sitting on the bridge. So who were the Ferengi? Mike Gomez was Damon Tarr. We will see him again on season 6. Tracy Walter played Kron and we will see him again as well. Jake Dingle played Mordok. Armin Shimmerman was LaTeX, and we'll see him again in just a few episodes. And Daryl Enriquez played Portal, and was also Romulan Ambassador Nonclus in Star Trek VI. The last outpost, where you meet the horrifying capitalist Ferengi, gets a score of 63. <laughs> Thanks for viewing. Be sure to leave comments below, click that like button, the share button, that subscribe button, and I'll see you again soon for another episode of The Next Generation Critic.